Who are your sisters and brothers and cousins and children? Don't you know that Islam is very strong on that? And that, that is what caused me to speak of that in Trinidad. I was telling them, listen, 27, 30 years ago, people used to love each other. Islam came and people started to hate each other. That doesn't make sense. 25, 30 years ago, everybody were like, uncle, auntie, you know, in Bangladesh, all over. Pakistan is happening all over. Arabia, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Egypt. I don't care. This is an international disease and disaster. Many years ago, people would respect this person. Once upon a time, people used to call their cousins brother. You know, your cousins, you say to me, now they don't even know. They say, that's my mother's family. That's my father's family. What is wrong with us? Are we mad? Are we, 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 we get in very big tabliki, you know, brother. I mean, big Salafi, big Shafi, big Dirbandi, you know, Dirban. I mean, I studied in Dirban. So I'm not criticizing nobody. I studied in Dirban. Go check my bio online. And this color, because he thinks he's from Dearborn, and this one is Berylwe, and this one long is bigger, beard is bigger, and the kurta is bigger. Or you came from this Muslim country, Arabia, Pakistan, Bangladesh. It doesn't make you better than anybody. Doesn't. That doesn't make us better than anybody. That doesn't mean you got to cut your relationship with your family members. Not because they are not like you or like us. Whether you're in America or where you are. And not because you start getting very regular or you're going in 40 days Jamaat or you're praying Salah five times a day or you start wearing your kurta below your knee. Not above the ankle, but below the knee. You know? <laughs> the sunnah is to wear the kurta above the ankle. There's some people wear it below the knee. There's a little difference. Eh? Anyway, I'm just going to take me serious. That's a little joke, but it's, you've got a choice. You could wait anywhere between the knee and the ankle. Don't worry. <laughs> that don't make us better. Allah, this is a sad thing and I see this happening all over the world. Uh, we, we read in the Quran and you know what's sad? We are becoming more religious. And we are becoming more educated in Islam. But we are getting far away from Iman. Karis you understand? We get in a lot of Islam. In the books, in the computers, in the phones. Islam a lot, but we're getting away from Iman. And that reminds me of Surah Hujrat, in which when the Arabs had told the, told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they had said, Amanna, in Surah Hujrat, what did Allah say? Tell them, don't say Amanna, but say Aslamna. Tell them, don't say that you have accepted Islam, you are, I mean Iman, Iman is yet to enter your hearts. You have only accepted Islam. Today I think I see that. Or you see that all around the place. A lot of us are just practicing Islam. Big masjids Islam. Big schools Islam. Long beard Islam. Big quarters Islam. In the heart Iman. Brother, that's not Shafiat's opinion. Eh? Go check Surah Hujurat. Very interesting. Iman has not yet accepted your Iman has not yet entered into your heart Allah says you have say aslamna you have just accepted Islam maybe that's what we're doing nowadays big mosque going and praying doing all these things but it's just the surface you know what the prophet sallallahu alaihi says about iman ha allahu akbar he says the lowest stage of iman I think we spoke about that a few weeks ago in Ramadan. The lowest level of Iman is to remove something, an obstacle from the way, to not to cause hindrance and inconvenience to someone. The lowest level. Sabse niche darja, the lowest level. Today, we Muslims become obstacles to other people. You put obstacles in the way to other people. We cause hurt and inconvenience and problems for other people. Do you know what that is? That is below the stage of Iman. Moving something to not a cause inconvenience and hurt to someone is the lowest stage of Iman. And when you put something and you become something and you cause something, 
That doesn't exist in Iman. That's out of the fold of Iman. Go check our hearts and let's look around and see how many of us fall into that category. And all our viewers on Al Hikma TV and worldwide. I know sometimes this sounds very harsh, but it's all about checking into our hearts. Forget about what you build and how many heads you perform and how much zakat you give and who you think you are. Mm -mm. And I like to use examples, you know, because you think you're Diobindi, you're Tabliki. You're... And these are some of the major conflicts that people think they're better. Berelwi, Diobindi, Tabliki. What else, Kari Sajad? What other group people think they're better than everybody else? Because if I don't say it, we won't understand it. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa he wasn't Dirbandi and Berelwi and Tabligi and, and Salafi and nothing. He was the Rasul of Allah and everything falls after him. But yet, 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 he used to love his uncle who was a Kafir, Abu Talib. He cried for his uncle when his uncle passed away, Abu Talib. The man did not accept Islam, but the Prophet cried for him. Used to pray for him to accept Islam all the time. Used to love him. Huh? Any one of us in the world, whoever looking at this khutbah, I don't care what you are. Four months tabliki, one year tabliki, 40 years salafi, 100 years dirbandi or berilwi, you couldn't be better than the Prophet. And if he loved his uncle who was a kafir, and he was nice and kind to all his other uncles who were kufar. And all the other people who were disbelievers. He was nice, loving, and kind to them. Even though they were harsh and bad and unkind to him. You remember the, sah the sahabas asked him, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa If someone is unkind to us and not nice and loving to us, should we retaliate the same way? He said, no, not at all. No, 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 no. You don't repel evil with evil. You be good to them. Be good to them. What? Be good to them. That's the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi we follow. So my brothers and sisters, don't fool us. Don't fool ourselves. And we think we're better than everybody else. Mm -mm. That's a serious international disaster in the Muslim world. Eh? I mean, it's a problem all over the world eh, and everything else. But Muslims should not fall to that. I know some of you should say, would say, listen, this is a problem everybody else faced. Well, I don't care if everybody else faced that. We Muslims came. Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat linnas. Ta'amuruna bil maruf wa tanhauna anil munkar. Allah says that you Muslims from this ummah, you are the chosen people for mankind to enjoin good and forbid evil. We shouldn't continue the evil and the bad habits that the other people do. Huh? And say everybody else do that, we're going to do that. That's why we are Muslims. That's why we read the Quran. That's why we follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa To be different to everybody else. We don't follow everybody else's style and way. We follow the pattern and conduct of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa all right, I really don't want to get off and off and off on that. Let me conclude in the next topic.